Hi, this is Wayne, Sears Parts Direct. Today we're going to talk about some troubleshooting steps to determine why your lawnmower spark plug won't fire. Although walk behind mowers can vary in appearance from this Craftsman 21 inch mower, they all work pretty much the same. These are the tools and supplies you might need depending on what the problem is. Work in a well ventilated area free of open flame or sparks. Start by checking the condition of the spark plug. Pull off the spark plug wire and remove the spark plug using a ratchet fitted with a deep socket. Look for carbon or oil buildup on the spark plug electrode that could prevent sparking. Also, look for a crack in the ceramic insulator. If you see excessive buildup or a crack, replace the spark plug. If the spark plug looks good, reinstall it and then connect a spark plug tester to check the ignition system. Connect the tester boot to the spark plug and connect the spark plug wire to the other end of the tester. Release the rope from the mower handle so it's in reach when testing the spark plug. Clamp the bail control bar down to release the blade brake. Pull the starter rope and see if the tester sparks. If the tester does spark, then the engine could have a fuel or compression problem. Check out this video to troubleshoot those issues. If the tester doesn't spark, then you'll need to check the ignition system. Disconnect the spark plug tester and leave the spark plug wire disconnected. Remove the screws from the blower housing and pull it off the engine to access the ignition system. We'll check the stop wire first. The stop wire connects the engine stop switch to the ignition coil. It diverts the spark plug current to the metal engine block when you release the bail control bar so the spark plug quits firing and the engine stops. If the stop wire frays and shorts to the engine before connecting to the stop switch, the spark plug will never get electrical current to spark. The stop wire is difficult to visibly check, so we'll check for a shortened stop wire using a multimeter. Clamp the bail control bar down to disengage the stop switch. Set your multimeter to measure ohms of resistance. Disconnect the stop wire from the ignition coil and touch one meter probe to the stop wire spade. Touch the other meter probe to the engine block. The meter should read infinite resistance if the stop wire is intact. If the meter measures resistance or reads zero ohms, then you need to replace the stop wire. Plug the stop wire back into the ignition coil if the wire is okay. Next, we're going to check the air gap between the ignition coil and the flywheel. When you pull the starter rope, the ignition coil produces electric current as magnets in the flywheel spin past the ignition coil. The ignition coil won't produce any current if it's too far away from the magnets. Use a feeler gauge to measure the gap between the ignition coil and the flywheel. You should measure between .006 and .014 inch. Reduce the ignition coil gap if it's wider than .014 inch. Rotate the flywheel until the magnets are in front of the ignition coil. Insert the .010 inch feeler gauge leaf. Loosen the mounting screws until the magnets pull the ignition coil against the leaf. Then, tighten the mounting screws, rotate the flywheel to free the leaf and pull it out. If the ignition coil gap is correct, then you'll need to replace the ignition coil because it isn't sending current to the spark plug. Here's a video that shows you how. If the engine misfires, backfires, sputters, or jerks the starter rope out of your hand when you try to start it, the flywheel key could be broken. A broken flywheel key disrupts the ignition timing because the magnets aren't passing the ignition coil in synchronization with piston movement. By design, the flywheel key shears off to protect the engine from damage if you hit a tree stump or rock while mowing. Remove the flywheel and check the flywheel key. Tip the mower onto its side with the air filter up and wedge a block of wood between the mower blade and the housing to keep the crankshaft from turning when you loosen the flywheel nut. Remove the flywheel nut, washer, and recoil starter cup. To protect the crankshaft thread, rethread the flywheel nut so it's flush with the end of the crankshaft. Install a flywheel puller onto the flywheel. Screw the flywheel puller nuts down to lift the flywheel. Tap the top of the flywheel with a hammer to break it free from the crankshaft. Remove the flywheel puller and flywheel nut. Remove the flywheel and check the flywheel key. Replace the flywheel key if it's broken. Here's a video to show you how. Once you replace the broken flywheel key, the ignition should work and the mower should start. Thanks for watching. Click that subscribe button and we'll let you know when we post new repair videos to the Sears Parts Direct YouTube channel.